Good day. Run some errands with me and let's talk about books. Beverages. So I have water in my faux Stanley, plain water, and then I also have my Advent tea for the day. This is day 11 tea, and it was Jingsen matcha green tea. Still too hot to drink, so we're going to put that down. So I said I was going to talk about books that I read. And it's funny when you don't have all the books that you read in front of you. At first I was like, oh, I didn't read that many books this year. I definitely wanted to read more. Then when I started pulling them out to be able to do this, I realized that that is not true. I actually have read quite a few books this year, which I love because I love to read. I, I think if I'm not at 20 books, I'm pretty close. What I also can't show you, and maybe I'll just put on the screen, I did read some audiobooks as well, too, that I'll get into, but let's get started. I'm not even sure where I want to start. I will start actually with the books that I completed because there are some books that I started and haven't fully completed, but I still wanted to include them because even though I didn't complete them, I was reading them. So I'm going to start with this first book here, and these are not in order. So I'm not sharing the books in order that I read them because I don't remember all that. I have it written down in my notion somewhere, but I didn't feel like doing all that. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is The Will to Change, Men, Masculinity, and Love by Bell Hooks. I think that now this is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. It completely broke my brain open in so many different ways, and there's no turning back. Like just Oh my goodness. It was a life. It, this was a life changing read for me. And basically just a quick synopsis of the book. It, it delves into patriarchy and how we know how patriarchy has screwed over women and the impacts that it has on women and children. But this focuses on what it says, men, masculinity, and love. So this goes into how patriarchy messes up and hurts and harms boys and men too. And that really in order for us to all be able to heal and for women to be able to be treated how they deserve to be treated and deemed as just as worthy is we have to acknowledge the elephant in the room that patriarchy screws over men and it harms them too. And that the only way that we're going to be able to move forward is if we all say patriarchy has screwed all of us over and we need to cast out the whole system. So it really goes into just how it affects men and how it plays out in their lives, their relationships, um, their ability to form connections and all of those things. Oh, it changed my life. Like I <laughs> changed my life and my whole view about relationships in so many different ways. Great book if you're open to it. Also read, I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. This was a good book. I liked his kind of no-nonsense approach. I also liked, for him, he's not big on super budgeting like some other financial advisors are. And I think that may just be where I'm at in like my financial journey. I don't need to necessarily budget every single penny that I spend on everything. So he kind of has a little bit more of a macro approach but it's very much common sense and all about emotions and how money is not a logical thing for most people. It's very emotional, but also that it can be very simple too. And that a lot of things that we're taught just make things complicated on purpose. The Woman Code, this book changed my life also. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I have a series 
that documents my journey healing a fibroid that was found in my uterus towards the end of 2021. And so just doing research on how to heal it, shrink it naturally, all my alternatives. I learned about cycle syncing and this book, as you can see, I have a bunch of tabs. So even if you don't have any uh, hormonal imbalances, this is still an interesting book to read. It basically says that women have four different phases in our menstrual cycle. There's our menstrual phase, our follicular phase, our ovulatory phase, and our luteal phase. And during those things, our hormones are shifting throughout the whole time. So our body chemistry is always changing. And that's kind of what's fascinating about women. Because of that, our body needs different things to support us in those different phases. And so making sure that you are focusing on eating certain foods to support those, those functions and those things that are going on in those phases can really help you be more in tune with your body and optimize uh, your reproductive and your feminine health. Love that book. This one, this was also a really good book that you can see. I have tons of like tabs and I write it. I like to write in my books, especially if I am learning something or I have thoughts about it. I put it in the books that I can refer to them later. So this is Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. This is all about organizing. Uh, basically, we have access to so much information now. And so he shares his system of how he organizes basically all the information that he amasses through books, websites, articles, all those things, projects. So if you're really into organization, then you would really enjoy this book, I think. I really liked it. It has revolutionized how I store, organize, and retrieve all the information that I amass. It makes it so much easier for me to find things. I love it. Hello. Here we go. Eat Smarter. This is by Sean Stevenson. I actually read another one of his books that I forgot to bring over here. It's called Sleep Smarter. So he's a kinesiologist, and I've been actually listening to his podcast for years, probably all, yeah, like 10 years. His podcast has been around for a while. I've learned so much. So this book, he really gets into like the actual science of eating and how different foods interact with our bodies and support our health in different ways. Same thing, I have it all marked up. I have tabs and everything I write in it. This has been really helpful thinking about eating food from a space of nourishing your body, not necessarily from a uh, standpoint of having a diet and you know not being overweight, but like really supporting and nourishing your body. I like that aspect. Gotta love Nedra Tawab. This was her book that came out this year, Drama Free. And this is all about managing um, family relationships. Really, really good. Gives you a lot of prompts, things to think about, um, scripts and guides, how to manage or address different situations that happen in, in different kinds of family relationships. So this is not a replacement for therapy, but it's a good start. The 1619 Project. Oh my goodness. This, <laughs> this is one I started and have not finished. It is a heavy, long read. So I actually am going to see if I can make a bigger chunk in this while I am on my, my holiday break. But it's a classic. I am going to finish it. So far, what I have read, it has been good. It's just very informative. It's a lot of information. And it's a lot of information that I did not learn in school at all hands down. Leading Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion by Rohini Anand. Also have a lot of notes in here. Anybody who works in DEI or is, has an interest in it or just wants to really learn more about from a global perspective or scaling, scaling programs, processes, operations um, so that they do they do include diversity equity and inclusion this is a helpful book she shares different examples and case studies in here she also just talks about her own journey and really that you know being inclusive is it's a journey it's not a destination no one's perfect at it we're all learning and so that's what makes people really good um, dei focused companies uh, practitioners is that they're just always willing to 
learn and that you are going to make mistakes sometimes. Next, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. So why I like Dr. Dr. Joe Dispenza and his books is because, you know, I'm an energy healer and people are like, oh, that's really frou-frou. It's not real. But he actually is also a scientist. And so when he is talking about things, he also goes into the science behind it, studies that he's done, studies that others have done to show additional evidence. I wouldn't say proof because it, it's real rather people think it is or not, but he has science to back it up too that says these things are real. And that when, let's say, our brain waves are in different states, that different energy healing modalities put our brains into different brain waves. There are studies that show that. And so he talks a lot about a lot about that. And of course, there's a lot of other things that he goes on to talk about in here as well. But if you are a person that needs scientific evidence and things like that, you might enjoy Dr. Joe Dispenza. I also read this book trilogy. So the first in the, I'm sorry, duology, not a trilogy, a duology. So it's a two book series. So the first one in the duology is Ray Bearer. Both of these are by Jordan Fuego. And so this is actually young adult fiction. I love fantasy young adult fiction. It is just so fun to read, so lighthearted because the work that I do in energy work, um, my full-time job, I work in diversity, equity, and inclusion can be very heavy, very serious. And so I just love reading a book where I can go far away to another place, to another land, another, you know, whatever, and just enjoy a good fictional book. So this was the first one. And then this is the second one in the duology, Redemptor. I also love it because it is a Black female protagonist. And yeah, we love that. So if you liked a Children of Blood and Bone, that book series, you will like this series, the Ray Bearer series. So I'm almost done with this book. I'll be done reading this by the end of this month. This is Nonviolent Communication by Marshall B. Rosenberg. This is another life-changing book. It is all about communication. And as I've been reading this book, I realized that I have not been taught how to communicate <laughs> with as much compassion as you would think. Um, and so I have so many notes in here as well in different tabs, because the big thing that he also talks about in the book is that basically most of us are not even taught or given the space to feel our feelings. And because we're always taught to suppress our feelings, especially if they're not positive, we are not in tune with ourselves. So we don't know what we want. And he believes that when we are communicating with people, we are always communicating our needs to people. And so if we're not in tune with ourselves and our emotions, it's hard for us to actually effectively communicate with people what we need. And so that's why we have wars, we have miscommunications, we have fights and all of those things because we don't know who we are and then we get mad at other people because they don't know who we are. And it it's a good book. If you're into you know, wanting to learn more about effective communication, uh, conflict resolution. This is a good book to check out. I'm really into it. He has a whole course, which I think that I'm going to sign up for next year because I want to learn more about this. Again, especially in the work that I, I do, I think it's a good support. Oh my goodness, so many books still, so many books. Nigeria Jones by E.B. Zaboy. I hope I'm saying her name right, the author. This was a really good book. This is also young adult fiction. It's not fantasy, but I really enjoyed this book. Again, the black female protagonist, which we love. She's in high school and really is just trying to figure out who she is. Her parents, her father has one vision for her and how she wants to go, but she wants to carve a name and a path for herself. And so she's trying to figure that out as a teenager, you know, who she is and what she wants to do. And I love that because I think it resonates with so many teenagers and the hopes and dreams that parents have for their kids and sometimes how they conflict with the hopes and dreams that their kids have for themselves. Inclusolytics, this is all about, so it also says how diversity, equity, and inclusion leaders use data to drive their work. 
So again, because I work uh, my full-time job in diversity, equity, and inclusion, we also are looking at a lot of data and storytelling. So I wanted to read this. By no means after reading this, will you become a skilled data scientist or data analyst, but it gives you more things to think about when you are looking at data and storytelling and how to interpret things and how to convey them to different stakeholders. So I really enjoyed this book. It was really helpful. I do a lot of storytelling in my job and justifications, basically why we do the programs that we do in DEI and how they impact the employee base, thus how it impacts the business and how it impacts the business making more money. So this was helpful in me giving me different things to think about. Audrey Lord, this is the girl. Audrey Lord, um, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. Another life-changing read. This is basically actually a collection of several essays that she wrote of, like around the 60s, but uh, so, so good. One of the main things that I took away from it um, was her one that was talking about uses of anger when they're responding to racism and how she was talking about how anger is a useful emotion and that if we are channeling it properly, it can be a good tool for us to disrupt the status quo so that we can build and create a new future that is better. So this is really good. Also the actual essay, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. Baby, it's basically saying you can't beat someone by playing them at their own game because that makes you them and that defeats the whole purpose. So it's about, again, the system that we have in place, there's no reforming it. You have to, you have to get rid of it completely and create something else. I don't know if the collective is ready for that yet. I don't know if I'll see that in my lifetime, but that's the only way that things are going to change but you can't use the master's tools against him to dismantle things. That's just not how it works. Cast. This was a hot book a couple of years ago when it first came out. I'm just, I was just not getting to read it. Uh, this one is also a, a heavy read. So if I have any international folks that watch my channel, my videos, you know, racism in America is very, very nuanced, very complex, and very deep rooted. And so this book gets into that. This is another heavy read that I have not finished because it just got overwhelming at one point. Again, a lot of things in here that I did not learn in school that my parents didn't learn in school, so they didn't teach me about it. So I'm learning a lot. It's a lot of information. But Isabel Wilkerson, she does a really good job of taking all this information and these uh, complex uh, things and theories and just the, uh, the experience that is America and explaining it in a very simple way, though. But it's just still a lot. But it's a really good book. And I would say if you are someone who lives outside of the U.S., who is not from the U.S., and you want to start... You will not be an expert after reading this, but if you want to start to understand the complexities of race and, you know, the uh, classism that goes on in America, this is a, a good start. And then a book I actually just got in the mail yesterday was this one. So obviously I have not started reading it just yet, but I'm going to be reading this over the break, is Money, Master the Game by Tony Robbins. So looking forward to that. When I was reading reviews, people were saying, definitely, I definitely have to read chapter two and chapter five. Chapter two is, I think, all about investing and chapter five, I'm gonna find it. So funny, I had it open. So chapter two is all about, okay, knowing the rules before you get in the game. So it's basically like busting different financial myths and investing myths. And then chapter five, they told me I needed to do is, uh, oh, creating a lifetime income plan. Obviously I'm gonna read the whole book, but I think I may follow the suggestions and read those two chapters first and then do the rest of the book. 
So those are the physical books I've read. And then the the main, uh, there actually, no, there's two audiobooks that I definitely read. There are actually more audiobooks, and I'm just forgetting them. So maybe I'll just share them at the, the end of this video. But I also listened to Mariah Carey's autobiography audiobook. That book was so good. And she narrates it. So you hear the book in her voice. That woman has been through a lot. She is really resilient. You've got to read it. I really recommend getting the audiobook so that you can hear it in her voice. She sings in different parts of it. It was Man, you know, fantastic. talking about all of this, I've read some really good books. So I'm looking forward to all the books that I'm going to read in 2024. I have my list started already of my, my reading list. So really excited. But I think that's it. I think that's it. Yes, you're going to watch me drink water and tea. Oh, this tea is good. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to close out this vlog for, for the day. So until tomorrow's vlog. Books that I read that I completely forgot. So I forgot about this book trilogy series that I read by Octavia Butler the awesome, amazing Octavia Butler. If you know anything about this author, she writes a lot of like black science fiction. She was one of the, the first black authors to write in that, that genre of literature. And again, to have black female protagonists in them and basically all black sometimes um, characters. In, in her storytelling. So I've read a lot of her other books like um, Fledgling and a bunch of others. And uh, I also did read uh, the parable, the, the parable sower, the, the sower of the parable, that. I read that last year though, that book freaked me out. <laughs> because She wrote that in the nineties and what she wrote in that book is very similar to what we are going through or what we could potentially be going through very, very soon. That's another story for another time, but this trilogy was really good. So if you like sci-fi books, sci-fi fiction books, you could enjoy Octavia Butler. So this is the Lilith's Brood trilogy. And so there's three, so there's Dawn, adulthood rights and imago this was really good and it was fascinating because so basically quick synopsis so the first book kicks it off there's a giant world war basically and man basically all but destroys himself okay so the remaining humans that are left on earth that are still alive these aliens come from another planet to earth to basically try to help the humans and restore earth back to what it was because the the war was like a nuclear war and it like decimated the lands and everything so what happens is the aliens come to help but obviously their help comes at a cost and it comes at the cost of what they call trade like trading genes so that their species can continue to live on but how their species continues to live on is by trading genes with people or beings from other planets. So they do this in different planets in the solar system or, you know, in the galaxy, whatever. And so I saw a lot of similarities to that in what we would call like colonialism and imperialism, because they basically come, they try to take over. They think that they are doing what is right for humanity, but in the process of doing that, they do things that eliminate the human need to have a choice and to feel like you had a choice and you made decisions for yourself. So it's really fascinating in that regard and also about, you know, really just the evolution of, of humanity and how what they did is if you, if you were human and you decided that you did not want to trade genes, because in trading genes, they basically you're creating like a new species. It's like half human, half them. And there were humans that didn't want to do that. And because of that, they basically kind of took away their fertility so that they could not have children. And if any humans that didn't agree to the gene trading some kind of way did 
have children. They were born with all these deformities and things like that. And so there was like a lot of resentment that humans had towards the aliens because they feel like they took away their basic human rights, which you can think about different things in life where there are groups of people or leaders who think that they're doing what is best for people and they are violating or taking away people's human rights. So really, really interesting series that if you really, when you read it and sit back and reflect, you can see how this fictional story, there are themes of what goes on in humanity now. And that basically, you know, if I think about it, even as an American, as a black American, when it comes to racism and slavery and the history of America, reading these, you know, the aliens seem a lot like colonialists, imperialists, you know, coming, thinking that they're, they're doing things better for the best, uh, you know, and taking away people's choices, um, messing with people's fertility and things like that. Like just this sense of having control over somebody. So really, really also good. I had to come back in and say that. And I remembered a couple other audiobooks that I read that I want to share really quickly. So I read Spare by Prince Harry. That was a really good book. It's narrated by him. So I do recommend getting the audiobook so that you can hear it narrated in his voice. Again, went through a lot. There are things I feel like he said that if you read between the lines, you get a gist of what some things that were going down. But really, really good and just very fascinating because I also watched the Netflix series, The Crown, which was also really fascinating. I didn't think that I would be that engaged or fascinated by the story, even though they say it's fictional. You know, it's not not everything is based off of real events. It still was interesting. So that was a good one just to hear from his perspective that basically he was groomed to be a spare, you know, that it was never expected for him to ever be king but he's a spare in case anything happens to his brother. And so that's how he was kind of treated growing up. And, um, you know, just hearing him talk about his love for his mother and their relationship and man, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, but it was very good. Another book that I said that I read, oh, I'm in the process of reading, I haven't finished it, is Homecoming by Dr. Tama Bryant. That's a really good book, but I'm really early into it. I tend to listen to the audiobooks more when I'm exercising and things. So they tend to take me a little bit longer to finish because I don't read them. I don't listen to them like when I'm not working out generally. So that was also a really good one. I already told you about Mariah Carey and the name of the other book I was saying about the founder and creator of It Cosmetics. It's called Believe It. And that one was I recommended on um, Brown Ambition, which is a podcast with Tiffany Aliche, the budget nista, and um, Mandy, I'm forgetting her last name right now. I wanted to call her Mandy Moore, but that is not her last name. They have a podcast called Brown Ambition, where they talk about just life, finances, all of those things. And they were talking about, they were talking about that book and like her story. So just wanted to come back in really quickly and share those because I had to talk about them. They were that good. So now, I'm leaving on that note, stay fly, stay flourishing.